in this lecture, I'm going to do, try and do a few more examples of sigma bonds and uh, slightly more uh, different examples. So, I'm going to pick um, a water molecule first. So, we're going to we're going to start off by figuring out how sigma bonds are formed between water molecules. Remember, whenever there's a single bond, that's going to be a sigma bond. So, I've drawn uh, the basic structure of water molecule where one oxygen is bonded to two hydrogen atoms. Now, going into detail, I've, uh, what I've done is I've drawn, I've written down the electronic configuration of oxygen. Oxygen has a total of eight electrons, which means that uh, the 1s orbital has two electrons, the 2s orbital has two electrons, the 2px has two electrons, but the 2py and the 2pz orbitals are half filled. They need one electron each. So they're going to try and bond with the other atoms and try and pull their electrons towards uh, these orbitals. Oxygen is going to try and fill these orbitals somehow. So, so oxygen needs two electrons in the 2py and the 2pz orbitals. So these are the orbitals that would be uh, taking part in forming a sigma covalent bond. So I've drawn an oxygen atom over here. And I've ignored all the other orbitals which are full. I'm only looking at the half fill orbitals. So, so I have this sigma bond over here. So this one, this orbital in blue, which I'm sharing right now. So the blue orbital over here, the oxygen nucleus is right at the center, and the blue orbital over here, that's your, that's going to be your 2py orbital, let's say. And the orbital that is going to be shaded green, this one over here this orbital is going to have one electron and this would be my 2p z orbital now in water oxygen is bonded to hydrogen and they're two hydrogens so so if you look at this uh, electronic configuration uh, one of the orbital oxygen is going to try and attract electrons from one of the hydrogen atoms and the other orbital would be filled by attracting electrons from another hydrogen atom and I've written down the electronic configuration of hydrogen which is over here so hydrogen just has one electron and that one electron is in the s orbital the first uh, shell s orbital so so that's what I've um, I've drawn over here so this over here is my hydrogen atom this is my oxygen atom so hydrogen has one electron in the s orbital now what's going to happen is that this oxygen molecule over here, let's label that oxygen, it's going to try and attract that one electron towards itself. But hydrogen needs one electron as well, so it's going to try and attract the oxygen atom's electron towards itself. And they're both going to try and attract the electrons. And what would eventually happen is that the two electrons being attracted, one by oxygen and the other one by hydrogen, those two electrons are going to get stuck in the middle because both oxygen and the hydrogen nuclei both are trying to attract and pull those electrons towards themselves. So they wouldn't be able to go to either right, uh, to the right atom or to the left at atom. So the two electrons would get stuck somewhere in the middle and they're going to end up forming a sigma bond. So the new bonding orbital would look So the new bonding orbital would look something like this where the region of maximum electron density would lie right in the middle. That's where there's going to be a very high probability of finding an electron. So hydrogen and oxygen, one of the orbitals of oxygen and one of the orbitals of hydrogen, they are going to end up forming a sigma bond over here. Now the exact same scenario would play out with the other oxygen orbital which is drawn in green over here, the 2pz orbital. Uh, that 2pz orbital is going to try and pull an electron from the from another hydrogen atom. So there's another hydrogen atom over here uh, that has one electron as well. So that one electron would be pulled and the oxygen would try and fill its 2pz orbital with that electron. But that hydrogen is not going to let go of that electron. It's going to try and pull because hydrogen needs one electron as well because it only has it only has one electron in its s orbital. So it needs one electron as well. So it's going to try and pull an electron from the oxygen's 2pz orbital. And, and the two electrons are going to get stuck in the middle again because they won't be able to get to either end because both atoms are trying to pull those electrons towards themselves. So another sigma bond would occur where the two orbitals would would eventually merge 
and the region of maximum electron density would lie right in the middle and that would end up forming and this would be your second sigma bond or second single bond that would be formed so oxygen's two orbitals would end up bonding with uh, two of the hydrogen atoms uh, which I have drawn over here and this is what the two sigma bonds would look like in this example of a sigma bond I'm going to discuss an NCl3 molecule uh, in which nitrogen is making three uh, single covalent bonds with chlorine which means that all single bonds are sigma bonds so so I've drawn the uh, going into detail I've drawn the nitrogen atoms electronic configuration written that down and the electronic configuration is that nitrogen has seven electrons which means that uh, it, its electronic configuration is one is two and the outer shell which is the second shell in nitrogen it has an electronic configuration of 2s2 2px1 2py1 and 2pz1 which basically means that it has three orbitals the 2px1 the 2py orbital and the 2pz orbital all of these orbitals need an electron an extra electron for those orbitals to be completed so the second shell of nitrogen is not completed it's going to attract electrons to complete that second shell by attracting electrons from other atoms so three electrons from some other element are going to be attracted by nitrogen and it's going to try and place them in the 2px, 2py and 2pz orbital. Now the other element in NCl3 is chlorine and chlorine has 17 electrons which means that it has an electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. Uh, the outer shell which is the third shell is 3s2, 3px2, 3py2 and 3pz1. Now if you look at chlorine, chlorine has one orbital which is half filled which means that it needs one electron in its 3pz orbital now if nitrogen were to borrow uh, were to attract an electron from chlorine and chlorine vice versa is going to try and attract an electron from nitrogen that would mean that nitrogen would need a total of three chlorine atoms so that because chlorine is only offering one of its electron it only has one orbital which is half filled that it could be, that would be offered for bonding because it's going to attract try and attract the electron from nitrogen as well so nitrogen would need three chlorines uh, so that three of its outermost orbitals can be filled by electrons so that's how uh, nitrogen is going to form bonds with chlorine now I've drawn uh, nitrogen's uh, I've drawn nitrogen's orbitals partially. Uh, this blue orbital over here. Let's call this uh, nitrogen had three. Remember nitrogen had three orbitals, which uh, and so one of this was uh, one of which was two p two p z orbital, and it had one electron in it. And chlorine had a lot of orbitals, but its last orbital, which was three p z, that was uh, that was incompletely filled it had one electron in it so that needed an electron as well so so i've drawn i've drawn uh, two of the orbitals uh, showing nitrogen's one orbital and chlorine's one orbital and nitrogen is going to try and fill its uh, 2pz orbital whereas chlorine is going to attract nitrogen's electron it's going to try and fill its orbital and both of them are going to attract try and attract each of the each of the one electron lying in the orbital and they're going to try and pull that electron towards them uh, but the electrons are going to get stuck in the middle they're not going to go either to nitrogen or chlorine because they're both being attracted by both atoms so so those electrons in these two orbitals they're going to get stuck in the middle and the region of highest electron density would be right in the middle so they, that's going to end up forming a a sigma bond between nitrogen and chlorine and the region of highest electron density would be right in the middle so so that's just one sigma bond that is formed between nitrogen and chlorine but nitrogen has another orbital that it needs to fill with an electron as well and let's call that orbital uh, and we discussed previously uh, let's call this one the 2p 2py orbital the one in green so this 2py orbital had one electron in it so it needed one more electron to complete uh, completely fill that orbital and this over here is uh, another chlorine atom I'm ignoring all the other orbitals which are full now chlorine had a 3pz orbital which was incompletely filled it needed an electron in it as well so it had one electron and it needed one more electron so they're both going to try 
and pull each other's electrons. Chlorine will try and pull nitrogen's electron, nitrogen will try and pull chlorine's electron and again the same thing is going to repeat. Both are going to try and attract the electrons and the electrons would get stuck in the middle. They would not be able to go to either nitrogen or chlorine because both of them are attracting each other, um, uh, both of them are attracting the electrons with equal force. So the electrons get stuck in the middle and they end up forming another bonding orbital which is going to be another sigma bond and the region of highest electron density would be right in the middle but then nitrogen has a third orbital which is the 2p uh, let's call this the 2px orbital and the one that that is drawn in red over here and i'm shading it so this shaded orbital also had one electron it needed one more electron and let's say there's another chlorine this one in red i'm ignoring all the other orbitals only the last orbital which is the 3pz orbital which had which had only one electron so uh, chlorine had an orbital which had one electron which was incompletely filled now both nitrogen and chlorine need one electron each so so this is the third chlorine atom it's going to try and attract nitrogen's electron and nitrogen will try and attract chlorine's electron and again there's going to be a tussle between the two electrons being going uh, uh, both of them being attracted by nitrogen and chlorine at the same time and the electrons are going to get stuck somewhere in the middle over here they would neither go to nitrogen neither go to chlorine they're going to get stuck in the middle because they're being attracted by almost equal force and they're going to end up forming another bonding orbital which would be another sigma bond so another bonding orbital would be would be formed and this would be your third sigma bond so th in this way nitrogen ends up forming three bonds one each with three chlorine atoms and all of them are going to be sigma bonds because the electron density would be lying right in the middle right between the uh, between the two nuclei and that's an example of uh, nitrogen forming three sigma bonds with three chlorine atoms